You can see by the sign, we're standing at the gravesite of Ness Pierce Jones. About six weeks ago, Janie Plummer, who works here at the cemetery, called me and asked me if I was interested in portraying James Henry Jones. I said, sure, and she sent me a, quite a large amount of research material. Reading his story, I found he was a fascinating man. He would have lived a fairly unremarkable life except for one incident that happened to him. He was the sole survivor of the Rock Creek Massacre of 1878. James Henry Jones was born in Carthage, Missouri in 1844, emigrated to Montana Territory with his family up the Mullen Trail. In 1833, I'm sorry, in 1878 when he was 33 years old, he was digging for gold in the Rock Creek drainage about 30 miles east of here with three other miners. One morning, there was a sharp knock on the door. When they opened the door, there was a fearsome crew of Ness Pierce warriors out there. Several of them burst in the door. They were demanding, who's the cook? Build a fire. We're hungry. Make us some food. Being scared and caught flat-footed, they, of course, they complied. Ness Pierce Jones went over to the stove and he started to kindle a fire with his flint and steel. As he's building the fire, he sees out of the corner, eye, corner of his eye, one of the Ned Spears warriors took his favorite axe, slipped it in his shirt as if to steal it. But he didn't say anything because he didn't want to start a commotion. In the meantime, three more warriors were in the back with one of the other miners named Elliot. Elliot offered him to smoke tobacco with him and the Indians refused. That was a bad thing because an Indian that won't take a gift of tobacco only means to steal it from you later. So a chill went up their spines. They knew they were in deep trouble. Meanwhile, the third miner named Jory was out in front, pacing back and forth in front of the cabin, slowly working his way towards the trees in, in an attempt to escape. Suddenly a shot rang out. Elliot said, they've shot Jory, they've shot Jory. Our hero, James Henry Jones, didn't hesitate for a second. He jumped up, burst through the door, pushed the two guards out of the way, and shot around the side of the corner of the cabin. When he came around the corner of the cabin, there were two more armed Ness Pierce warriors there, and he just muscled them out of the way and ran past them. He made for a gully out behind the cabin, and down into the gully he went for cover. Went across the bottom, back up the other side. By the time he came up the other side, those two warriors had recovered their wits and opened fire on him. They shot and shot and shot at him as he ran up the hill, and one of them hit him high in the arm near the shoulder, in his words. He ran, continued to run up the hill to make his escape. When he got to the top, he looked down to his dismay, Ness Pierce chief and the two warriors were following up the hill with their guns. He continued to run and he was trying to make his way to Beaver Creek where he knew the willows were thick and maybe he could hide. At one point he turned around and the two warriors both had their guns pointed right at him. One of them had a needle gun in his description, the other had a revolver. Nez Pierce Jones said, go back to my cabin, take whatever you want, all of it is yours, all you have to do is take it. He said the warriors seemed to consider this for a few seconds and then decided to wipe him out. The one with the pistol raised the gun, he called it a revolver, it'd be similar to this. Raised a revolver with both hands as if to make a clean, accurate shot. With no other resources, he reached down and picked up a rock and threw it at the one with the pistol. He said, I didn't hang around long enough to see if I hit him, but it caused, him, caused his shot to go wild and he missed me. And he took off running, he was heading for Beaver Creek and the Willows. The closer he got, the more the Indians would outflank him and outsmart him and run him out into the open. He had a terrible, terrible run of it. He run from tree to tree to tree. Um, he decided he could never make it to Beaver Creek and the Willow, so instead of going east, he ran south towards Baldy Mountain. He described Baldy Mountain as a rock slide mountain with snow at the top all year round. Earlier in his career, he had attempted to climb Baldy Mountain and found it was just too much work, it was too hard, he couldn't get up it. He said on this day, though, he just ran up that hill like it was nothing. <laughs> when he got to the top, to his relief, he found the Indians had given up. It was just too much work for him. They weren't going to bother to follow him up there. Now the bad part was he couldn't go back the way he came because the Indians were down there, so he had to go off the back side. And he said it was a terrible descent. It was slippery and rocky. He said he had to hold onto, ro onto rocks and brush and trees all the way down to keep from tumbling to the bottom. 